Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, The Flash. And I am very excited about this figure. In fact, this is my most anticipated figure from McFarlane Toys ever since he was announced. So I'm very happy to finally have my hands on it. And I was able to get this at my local GameStop. So if you want this figure, go ahead and start hitting GameStop now. You might get lucky. But let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with the packaging, we do have the standard McFarlane Toys packaging. You are able to see the figure right here. I like that they put some work into the way that he's posed in the box so you could kind of get a good sense of all his articulation. So that's nice. And then you are able to see the accessories he comes with. Right here in front, it says DC Multiverse, The Flash. On the side of the box, it says The Flash. And then on the back, we get a look at the cover of The Flash number one from DC's Rebirth. And that is what this figure is based on. And then down here, we get a look at some other characters that McFarlane Toys has made. They're not actual shots of the figures, but they're just shots of like the comic book appearances of those characters. So that's cool. And aside from that, the box is collector friendly. So you are able to remove the figure and put it back in as you please. But enough about the box. Let's go ahead and rip the flash out and take a look. So here we have the flash right out of the box. And this is a really good looking figure. It's based on the way that the flash looked during the whole DC rebirth thing. But I will say that it does feel a little inaccurate to those comics. Because from what I remember, the way that he looked in those books was basically just the classic flash. But with some more yellow lightning bolts kind of running throughout the costume. There was a bunch of lightning bolts on the legs and on the arms and if you look at the trading card that the flash comes with you could see some of that you could see like it, it just kind of runs throughout the costume and they left that out of the actual figure but they did include some lightning bolts on the chest so that does look good and then they also added some sculpted detail which i i'm not really sure if it's accurate or inaccurate but there's some sculpting work on the arms and the side of the body and on the legs there's just like lines and things like that it does look good i just don't know if it's 100 percent accurate and that's kind of like the the deal with the whole figure you know like i like the way it looks to me it's an awesome looking flash figure but i just don't know if it's like 100 percent accurate accurate to the look that they were going for but you know that doesn't bother me too much overall i think it looks great but and the sculpting work on flash is very well done i really like the way that this head sculpt looks i love that smirk on his face the eyes look really clean and painted very nicely we've got the lightning bolts on his head that look pretty good too there's a couple of small little paint imperfections but nothing major i think for the most part the head looks really nice look how clean the eyes are damn that's crazy that looks good and that smirk is just perfect for flash so i think this is awesome then moving down into the body the logo on the chest does look good too but it's a little thick it's like a separate sculpted piece so it's not just painted on but it's kind of thick i think it would have been better if it was a little flatter i guess because look how big it is that's kind of crazy but it does look pretty good then we've got the lightning bolts on the chest we have some sculpted details right in here that carries on like throughout the rest of the figure like on the side of the body and on the arms and then i have some paint imperfection right there on the lightning bolt around the waist so that kind of sucks i'm gonna have to touch that up we've got the peg holes on the arms there for the uh, speed force effects that he comes with and we have some more of these lines some more sculpt work on the legs but yeah, I think for the most part, the paint and sculpting work on this guy is pretty well done. I love the way that the head sculpt looks, and the rest of the body looks pretty good too, but there are a couple of minor paint imperfections. But for the most part, I think this is a pretty good looking figure. And as for the accessories, the Flash does come with one of the standard McFarlane Toys display bases, and there's not a whole lot going on with this. It does say DC down here, and then we have the peg that sticks into the bottom of the figure's foot. It is a little plain, but it does its job, so I'm happy that they included it. And then he does come with a trading card, and I really appreciate this because it actually gives us a little bit of information about the Flash on the back of the card, and I think that's dope because a lot of figures that come out these days don't have any information on the characters, and not everybody is an expert on comic book characters. So I'm happy that they gave us some kind of inf information on the flash i know that most people are pretty aware of what the flash is all about but i just appreciate the fact that they give us something that has some kind of information about the character so that's really dope and then aside from those two things which we see with most of the mcfarn and dc figures the flash also comes with some things that are specific to him and that is these awesome speed force effects so let me go ahead and plug these things in and give you a look at how this all looks so first off we have the one that plugs into the hole in his back and these are actually on hinges so you can move them around and that gives you some different options and stuff you know so that's dope and then we have these small ones that plug right into the arms and then we have these bigger ones that plug into the legs and as you can see there's peg holes right into the arms and legs and 
these things slide right in with no problem at all these are awesome accessories right here and they definitely take the figure up a couple notches you know just like as a display piece this stuff is like this will look really cool on your shelf you know just hanging out like that with all these speed force effects going crazy and then you have this one that you could plug into the bottom of the foot and look at that that's just awesome and then maybe you could take the display stand and there you go like that would look really cool on your shelf and then you could like mess with these and do whatever you want and now for some quick size comparisons we have the mcfarland flash alongside a couple of my favorite flash figures on the left we have the dc icons flash and on the right we have the mezco 112 collective flash and then next up we have them alongside the mezco 112 collective aquaman and the dc collectibles dc essentials flash and then now here we have the flash alongside the NECA dc versus dark horse green lantern and the mcfarland toys superman and then next up, we have the Flash alongside a couple of the best DC figures that McFarlane Toys has given us so far. On the left, we have the White Knight Batman, and on the right, we have the Curse of the White Knight Azrael. And this Azrael has actually been modified. I went ahead and did the thigh cuts and the increased torso articulation. Look how far he could bend forward now. <laughs> That's awesome. And then he does have the thigh swivels, which really make it a lot more fun to handle, you know. And the thigh swivel thing was really easy to do. Bill Mahoney has a very good instructional video on how to add the thigh swivel to McFarland figures. It's very easy to follow. Um, I suggest you guys check that out and take his advice because it really improves these McFarland figures. And then for the torso mod, I went ahead and did the same thing I did on the uh, Marvel Select PS4 Spider-Man. And it worked out good for Asriel too. But look at that. You could go forward a crazy amount. Uh, but yeah, be sure to check out Bill Mahoney's video. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so that if you want to add thigh swivels, uh, you can learn how to do that. It's not very hard. You just need to be very careful. It involves a razor blade and some heat. So it's a it's a really cool mod, but you need to be very careful when you do it. But anyway, And of course, we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And just to show the Flash alongside a couple of other 7-inch scale figures, here we have him alongside the NECA Greatest Turtle of All Time in disguise. And then on the right, we have the Marvel Select PS4 Spider-Man. And then for the final size comparison, here we have Flash alongside the NECA King Kong and the Storm Collectibles Lobo. And I'm really excited to see how good this King Kong and this Flash look together because I did want to use Kong as a Gorilla Grodd against this Flash. But I wasn't really sure how it would work because the McFarlane Flash is like a 7 inch scale figure. So I thought he might be too big for this NECA Kong. But as you can see, I think it'll work. So I'm excited to take pictures of these two together. I think it's going to be dope. And as far as the articulation goes, to be honest with you, I am really disappointed with what we have going on here he's not very fun to play with he's not a whole lot of fun to handle you can get him into some running poses but it's not very pleasant to do so they did some really weird things here and it kind of caught me by surprise and i'm not talking about like the lack of the thigh swivel like we already know that mcfarland toys doesn't do thigh swivel so it is what it is but there's other things that caught me by surprise in terms of how restricted the articulation is in some areas and it's just very disappointing but let's go ahead and get into it so first off the head is on a ball joint so it does move side to side Got a little bit of tilt to it, which is pretty cool. He can only look up to about right there, which it's not very good at all. But he could look down a pretty good amount, so that's cool. And then for the torso, the torso is where I'm really, really disappointed. Because we have a diaphragm cut, and then we have a ball joint at the waist. But even with both of those, he only moves forward to like right there. Like that is crazy. That really, really sucks. <laughs> It can move side to side, which is nice. It could twist a pretty good amount. And then he could even crunch back a, a really good amount. Like, check that out. So that's cool. And someone even mentioned, like, maybe the lower torso was on backwards. So I went ahead and spun it around just to see. And obviously it looks very strange. But the funny thing is that he actually does get a little bit more <laughs> torso articulation. But it's not on backwards. So it just, man, yeah, I don't know what the heck they were thinking. Like, why not give it good articulation at the torso you already have the cuts like i understand like mcfarland toys has this whole thing that they don't like to add cuts to the figures because it looks ugly like i get that and i could kind of respect it but in this case the cuts are there so why not make them functional why not do the most with it you know 
So anyways, I was pretty disappointed with the torso and that's really what kind of like took the wind out of my sails when I started messing with this figure. I took him out and I was like, oh yeah, the legs don't move. You know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, there's no thigh swivel, oh, but that's okay. Let's see what we could do. Start messing with the torso and it just like doesn't move. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? And then moving up to the arms here, we do have the butterfly type of joint. We do have ball jointed shoulders that do go all the way around. His arms could come out to the side a really good amount. So that's nice. And then this is a weird thing too. He does have upper bicep swivel, but it's on there. I don't know. It's weird. It, it like you can't really move it very much. I mean, you can move it a little bit, but look at how tight it is. And like, I'm afraid to try to spin it all the way around because I think I'll break the peg or something. But look at that, like barely moves. It's like at a weird angle. So it doesn't spin freely. But look at that. That is very strange. Like again, the cuts there. Why not make it work? In this case, I mean, it works enough. Like, I guess there's no reason for me to want to spin his arm all the way around. And it does get some movement like that, as you could see. And then, you know, you also have the butterfly joint shoulder that kind of just helps the overall arm movement a lot. So, you know, that's cool. But it's just so weird that it doesn't spin all the way around. And then he does have double jointed elbows, which are nice. Get some really good bend there. And then for the hand, we do have a ball joint. So you could spin it at the actual ball joint or you could rotate it at the hand and then we do have a hinge in there on that ball joint so that's cool and then for the legs they do come all the way out to the side kicks forward to about right there which is pretty nice but then look at this this is really weird so check out like he's got a like an extra butt cheek piece and that that gives us even less thigh swivel like it's it's designed in a way that like the thigh should be able to swivel on the joint there. They just don't have the cut. Kind of like a NECA figure, but it's just executed poorly. Like with NECA figures, you're usually able to spin the thigh a lot. But in this case, they have that like extra butt cheek sculpt that's like stopping any further movement. If they cut this out, like you could, you'd be able to move the leg a lot and it wouldn't mess up the way it looks or the sculpt or anything because it's hidden under this rubber piece. And speaking of the rubber piece on the pelvis here, this thing's kind of frustrating because when you're moving the legs around, like this leg right here gets caught on the outside. And then it's just kind of weird. You gotta like move this around to get it underneath there again, then kind of pull it down a little bit. I like the idea of this thing because it hides the joints and stuff, but why not use it to its full potential, you know? like you know make some more cuts right in in here and then you get some more movement and it's all hidden by this cool little you know soft rubber underwear piece so again i don't know but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cry too bad about the lack of the thigh swivel because i already knew that was going to be the case so it is what it is but i just feel like they they can do things a little bit better here to make up for the lack of thigh swivel and then we do have double jointed knees which get a pretty good bend. Actually, they get a really good bend, so that's awesome. No boot cut, but we do have a swivel at the foot. At the ankle, we have a ball joint just like we do at the wrist, so you get all the same type of movement. You get a swivel, you get a hinge, get some rocking action, and then we also have a toe hinge, so that's pretty good. But yeah, the foot moves up and down a pretty good amount. It could go forward to right there, come up to right there, so pretty good stuff at the foot. But in general, like I said, I'm pretty disappointed with the articulation on this figure. You are able to get him into some cool running poses, but it takes a lot of work. And uh, like I said, it's just not like the most, you know, it's just not the most pleasant thing to handle, you know, like that's a decent running pose that you could get him into. And I guess that ab crunch really has no effect on getting him into running poses. But for me, I just don't like that restriction. And I don't like the fact that it's just such a hard stop right there, you know. But like I said, I guess the the goal is still achieved. You can you can put them in running poses, and uh, there you go. You know, so if that's all you care about, then I guess you'll be okay with the articulation on this figure. But if you're one of those guys like me that likes to handle the figures a lot and play around with them and do a bunch of cool stuff, then you might be a little bit disappointed. All right, so overall, I do like this figure, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed, and it's mostly because of the articulation. But I will say, in all fairness, it's probably my fault that. I expected anything other than something like this from McFarlane Toys because, as we know, their focus is not really articulation. They've said that multiple times. For the most part, they just want to make good-looking figures, and that's kind of been their thing for 
20 years at this point and that's cool i do respect that and everything but you know sometimes i kind of I get tricked a little bit because when I saw this figure, I was like, oh, cool, a super articulated Flash figure. He doesn't have thigh cuts, but that's okay. Everything else is going to be there, but it turns out that's not the case. But, man, it's so, like, it's so hard to see, to know what we're going to get with this line because, like, the Batman Metal stuff... That All that stuff was like pretty articulated, especially Devastator, which is such a huge figure. You would think that they'd be able to get at least that much articulation into this figure. But the torso on that figure has all kinds of movement and here, like barely nothing. So, you know, and even the Grim Knight, that figure's torso has some really nice movement too. I just wish that the Flash had just as much as that and I would have been happy. The fact that he doesn't bend forward at all is really disappointing. It, it just, it, it kind of baffles my mind. But at the same time, I need to understand that McFarlane Toys doesn't really care all that much about articulation. And that's their thing. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. For me, and my personal taste, it's not something that necessarily appeals to me because I like to be able to handle my figures and play with them and all that good stuff. And in that regard, this Flash isn't very enjoyable, you know? Like, you could get him into a cool just like a cool pose like this and kind of just be done with it, leave him on your shelf like that, and then there you go. But, like I said, I like to pick up my toys and mess around with them. And this figure is not necessarily a joy to do that with. So I'm probably going to go ahead and try to do the same modifications that I did on the Azrael figure on this guy and see how it turns out. Hopefully I don't ruin it. <laughs> so even though to me there are some negatives with this figure, there are definitely a lot of positives as well. First off, the figure looks amazing. I think it's a really nice looking Flash figure. I love the accessories too. All those Speed Force effects look really nice. And like I said, I like the display base and the card that he comes with. So, you know, for 25 bucks, it's not a bad deal there's a lot of good stuff in there a uniquely sculpted figure that looks really nice but you know just the articulation is a little lacking just understand that when you go pick up this figure then i think you'll be all right for me flash is probably my favorite dc character and i don't know if this quite hits the mark i'm probably going to do those modifications like i mentioned and i think after that i'll be all in love with this figure but just as it is right out of the box i am a little disappointed but i could definitely appreciate a lot of the positives that i see here so anyways i think that's it thank you so much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff also be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time i go live thank you very much peace what's up guys i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for sticking around for another after the credits modification segment and as you could probably tell from the review i was a little bit disappointed in the flash but i still felt like i could salvage what was there because the figure looks really good he had some decent articulation but it just wasn't enough for me so as soon as i was done recording the review i went to work i started chopping this guy up and i was able to do a little bit with it but it was much harder than i was expecting but still at the end of the day i was able to increase the articulation a little bit so let me go ahead and show you what i did so first off i increased the articulation on the head now he could look way far back so that's good and then I did add the thigh swivel. And you know, the th I kind of get McFarlane's point when it comes to the thigh swivel. You know, it does break up the sculpt. But that's just kind of like the nature of action figures, right? Like that's kind of how it is. The articulation breaks up the sculpt and that's just like, you know, it is what it is. That's kind of just <laughs> what it's all about. It's about mixing the two things. The articulation breaks and the sculpt and just making it all work. And I think like this here isn't like a, like a super offensive thing to the sculpt. So you could you could twist it around and like most positions that you'll have the figure in where you need to utilize the upper thigh swivel. I mean, it's going to be hidden anyways. You know, it's not going to be at the forefront. So you're not really going to notice like some strange cuts, you know. And you are able just to put it back exactly how it was and then there's no break at all. So there it is. So I really wish that they would consider adding the thigh swivel to their figure so that we don't have to. Uh, modify them but at the end of the day thanks to people like bill mahoney and a bunch of other people out there i'm sure um you know now we could add the thigh swivel ourselves. so there you go that that's that and it is very helpful and makes the figure a lot more fun to mess with and as you could probably tell i did increase the articulation on the torso but not as much as i wanted to i was only able to get him to bend forward to about right there but it's still much better than it was 
and now at this point i enjoy handling this figure ever since i did these modifications i haven't been able to put this guy down so i am happy with it even though the the torso modification was more work than i wanted to get into and i really didn't get that much out of it so you know it is what it is but let me go ahead and give you a quick look at exactly what i did with the torso and the neck all right so i'm not really going to show you exactly what i did to add the thigh swivel if you want to learn how to do this i'll leave a link in the description below to bill's video he has a very helpful tutorial on how to add thigh swivel to mcfarland figures so if you check that out i'm sure you could figure out how to add this thigh swivel it's really not that hard but i don't want to try to explain here and re lead you down the wrong path because i'm still kind of learning myself but i'm going to show you what i did to some of the other parts mostly the torso so the first thing i did to increase the movement on the neck is make a little notch right there and you can see that there's now a notch for the ball peg to travel into and uh, let's go ahead and pop this back on so now that the head's on you could see that his head goes way back so that is good stuff there and this is probably the most useful and easiest modification i did on this figure so if you just do that you'll add a lot to the figure and then for the torso i had to get kind of crazy look what i did in here i mean the way they did this was crazy it wasn't as easy as like asriel or the marvel select ps4 spider-man there was a lot of stuff going on in here and you know i had to do a bunch of work and i really didn't get that much out of it as you can see here this still doesn't even move that much <laughs> so i had to do some crazy stuff and then in here i had to dig out a little bit just to create a little path for that peg to travel into, just to get a little bit more movement out of it. And then I did the same kind of thing here. It looks messy, but when it's all put together on the figure, you can't see some of that messiness, or you can't see any of it, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, so I had to create a little path right there because if you look inside there, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So I was just trying to create room for that stuff to move around in there. And um, yeah, like I said, when you put it all together, you won't see all that ugliness. And also, from like popping this figure apart so much and digging away at things it this ball joint kind of got loose so i added a little bit of super glue to it just to make it a little bit thicker and uh you know just to cause a little bit more tension in there when it's moving around so it's not just flopping around so that's what i did to increase the articulation on the flash's torso it really didn't do that much for me but you know, at least it's a little bit more fun to handle now. And so there it is. Like I said, I didn't really get as much articulation as I wanted to get out of these modifications, but it's enough to have me satisfied with the figure. So I'm happy with what I have going on here. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and pick up an extra flash figure just to have like the original version, maybe keep it in the box or something. But as of right now for a flash that I could handle all the time and mess with and pose around and have some fun with, I think this is definitely gonna do it for me. And look at that, it looks awesome. Before, you could pretty much only get them into like one running pose. But now with these modifications, you could you could kind of spice it up and do different things. And, uh, you know, you've got all kinds of cool stuff going on that wasn't really possible before. So I am happy with what I have going on here. And you know what? This figure was cool out of the box, but you just have to know what you're getting into. You just have to understand that it's not the most articulated figure ever, but it's still a cool looking flash. And I think most people will be satisfied with it. But for me... Like I said, I want to be able to handle my figures and mess around with them a lot. And uh, before this, he, I couldn't really do that. But with now him. I can. I made it work and I'm extremely happy with it now. So anyways, I think that's it. Thank you so much for sticking around. Have a wonderful day. Peace.